that will find me so blunt about that place. Even your emotion had an echo. And when you out there without care, I was out of town. But it wasn't because I didn't know, no. I just knew too much. Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Possibly. And I hope that you're happy. Time of your life. Think twice. That's my only advice. <coughs> Hello, everybody. A very good morning to you. Happy Friday, wherever you're watching me from today. Bogota, Colombia. You know, it's 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 so strange. I mention Bogota, Colombia every so often here on my lives. And you know, this morning coming through to the office, I'm going down the wormhole. And all of a sudden, I begin to see information on Bogota, Colombia. I'm thinking, what is going on here? How in the world does Facebook know that I've been talking about Bogota, Colombia? And then I, all of a sudden, I begin to see content on Bogota, Colombia. Boy, somebody explain that to me. I'm not tech savvy, so I have no idea. Hello, everybody. Hope you guys slept well last night and you're ready for a brand new day. It's, it's unbelievable that we literally zipped through this past week. We are now standing on the precipice of the weekend. It seemed like it was just yesterday that it was Monday. And now all of a sudden, boom, it's Friday. Somebody please explain that to me. Louis Okito. Louis says, Mr. Sir, what's going on with Sean Temba? He was talking about you. Well, he talks about me. I talk about him. He's a, you know, I've always said about Sean, you know, if, if, if you put your name forward for leadership, and I will never stop saying this because this is the absolute truth. If you put your name forward for leadership, you should be able to, to, to be asked tough questions about your past financial misgivings. If you are on record as having defrauded a foreign government and it's on record, and then you come back to Zambia to your, your, to your home country and you begin to tell your people that you want to lead them, but here it is, you've left a trail of financial scandal behind you. We have the right as people to ask you to explain yourself. But if you keep ducking and diving and bobbing and weaving, it tells me that you are not ready to become president. That's the whole point. Hello, who is that? Let's say a few shout outs. Good morning to you. Thank you so much. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Abigail, good morning. Wherever you're watching me from, the Maldives, Bogota, Belize, the islands of the sea, Shreveport, Louisiana, Lake Charles, Baton Rouge, um, Plaquemin, Kwakasomo Kuchinsali, Northern Province, Western Province. Wherever you are, welcome. Thank you. Guys, a few things that I'd like to talk to you about. And it's it's been it's been on my heart to do this. 
First of all, I want to talk about, you know what's really sad? The suicide of Twitch boss. You know, I, I really just cannot wrap my brain around that. But, but as with many cases that are similar to this one, I mean, we all remember when Robin Williams, the great comedic actor, Robin Williams, I mean, a man that has been a part of our viewing fabric from the time that we were little boys. I knew Robin Williams before I knew his name. We used to call him, um, remember he played that alien, and he would always say, Nano, Nano. When we were kids, there was a television show that used to come on ZNBC, and he played a character, he played an alien on there. And he would always say, Nano, Nano. Remember that? I forget now the name of that television show. Somebody in the comments, please tell me what the name of that show is. But, you know, Robin Williams, his star rose in the Hollywood corridors of fame. Accolades from here till kingdom come. And then all of a sudden, we heard that he had killed himself. He had hung himself. And the whole world was aghast. The whole world just, we, we couldn't wrap our brains around that. We, 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 we began to ask the question, well, well, what could be so bad that would drive you to a point of ending your life, even in the midst of all of that success? or perceived success, in the midst of all of that, all of those accolades. And then now we hear about this young African-American DJ who was a, a part of Ellen DeGeneres' show, a family man, had a wonderful wife, beautiful children, an illustrious career, Everything seemed to be going well. All pistons were firing. All cylinders <clears throat> full speed ahead. And then all of a sudden, the lights turn off. And you wonder why. Why? Well, I was watching something that Ellen did the other day, and I, and I kept on asking, why would Twitch end his life in the midst of all of that support, he had friends, family, a wife, children. And you know what's so sad about suicide cases is that once you leave that blot, that blight, once you smear that on your children, your children will never be the same again. Never. And it breaks my heart. Now, I know, you know, I mean, suicide, people that go through suicide, there are no easy answers. You know, when you don't walk in the shoes of a person that's contemplating suicide, it doesn't make sense. But to them, there's something about being in that frame of mind being in that place of utter darkness where you feel that the only way out is to escape. I would encourage you today, whoever you are, talk to someone. It doesn't have to be a, a, a pastor. It doesn't have to be somebody religious. It doesn't even have to be a family member. It could be someone you trust. And, and just... Tell them how you feel. I'm, I'm in a bad place. And this is what I'm thinking of doing. Talk to someone. Talk to someone. Okay? All right. I want to talk about this here for a moment. Guys, can you hear me? Somebody's saying that it's there's low volume. Can you hear me? Just tell me in the comments if you can hear me. I think my volume is fine. 
think it's okay. I can hear myself in my my little deals here. Just just real quick, just tell me if you can hear me, if if I'm loud and clear, and so that we can continue with this um, this broadcast. I will not keep you long. Loud and clear, Odette says loud and clear. Thank you so much, Odette. Appreciate that. Okay, let's let's get into this. You know, the other day, a while ago, uh, it wasn't the other day. It was a while ago. A friend of mine from Dubai, sorry, not Dubai, Qatar, uh, sends me a message and says, have you seen this picture of Miles and this young girl? And I said, no, I, I hadn't seen that. And, and she said, well, you know, apparently Miles is is sort of, you know, hot and heavy with, with some model. So I, I looked at the photograph and, you know, social media being what it is, you don't always believe the first thing you see. So I looked at it and I thought, wait, wait a minute. I'm not sure. Is this real? Is this Photoshopped? Is it, you know, because not everyone is media smart. Have you ever heard of that phrase? My my beautiful niece, Mwange Malau, is the first person that taught me that phrase, media smart. Media smart means you can look at a film or, or a picture and you can tell, oh no, this is photoshopped. This is not real. This is, this is imposed. This is superimposed on the original image. When you have the ability to decipher or to discern or to ascertain if what you're looking at is not real, that ability is called being media smart. And so, you know, I mean, I, I consider myself to be a media smart person, but I looked at that photograph and I, and I, I thought, wait a minute, is this Photoshop? And basically, it was a photograph of a young model that is standing with Mr. Miles Sampa, who used to be the mayor of Lusaka, who is now the current duly elected member of parliament for Matero constituency, Honorable Miles Sampa. This young girl, model, came up to him and, and, and she asked for a photograph and, and they took a photograph together. Now, once that picture was posted, the way that, you know, she placed her hand on his chest, you know, or in front of his chest, the way she was standing so close to him, everybody was, you know, everybody started asking, well, what is this? Who is this? And why are they standing like that? Now, let me, let me be very clear. Of course, you, know, you guys know. You know that Miles Sampa is a friend of mine, is someone I love, I get along with flowingly. I mean, him and I are really good friends. And the moment I saw this photograph, I called him up. I phoned him. You know, because when stuff happens to me, he calls me. He, he says, hey, man, what's up? What's, what's this I'm hearing? What's this I'm seeing? And then I explain it to him. So I phoned him up and I said, hey, Miles, <laughs> what gives? What's the deal, man? Who, who's, who's the chick in the picture? Who's this broad? So she sa he says to me, he says, he says, you know, I, 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 all I did, a young girl walked up to me, as many people do. We, we, he said, and, and as you know, everybody, there, there are lots of celebrities in Zambia, okay? And, and people want to take pictures with you. When you are a celebrity, especially people like Miles, who have served in government. They've been mayor of the city of Lusaka, their current MP. Miles is a, is, is a very prominent social media personality in Zambia. So it's natural for people to want to take pictures with him. And people do that all the time. You know, he could be walking down the street, 15, 20 people will gather around him and say, you know, could we take a photograph? So this was one of those nights where he was at a function and he was leaving and some young lady walks up to him and innocently said, I'd like to take a photograph with you. And, and Miles being who he is, he, he doesn't 
mind about things like that. He says, sure, let's, let's do that. Well, the way the photograph was taken, of course, raised questions and, you know, a lot of people talked and, and stuff. But the bottom line is that he was just taking a photograph. And, and especially when you're taking multiple pictures, when you're doing every movement, every angle, every angle, every movement is captured. And so if you capture the right movement in the wrong way, <laughs> it can send the wrong message. Ooh, those are bars there, boy. Let's say it again. If you capture the right movement in the wrong way, it sends the wrong message. And, and that's what this was. That's all it was. There's nothing more to that. And it reminds me, it reminds me of the, of the very famous story of Keanu Reeves. Tell me in the comments if you guys know about Keanu Reeves. You know who Keanu Reeves is? He's the young man that acts in that film. The Matrix. He's done many. He's done The Matrix. He's done. He's done uh, John Wick. First time I ever saw Keanu Reeves was he did a video with the the the, the renowned artist Paula Abdul. He was a part of that cast. Very handsome young man. Of course, he's up in age now. Uh, he still looks good, you know. But uh, Keanu Reeves famously was sued by a woman that he innocently took a picture with. A fan just walked up to him and said, Keanu, could we take a picture? So he put his arm around her, her waist, not her shoulder, her waist. And then she alleged that right after this picture, he he sort of felt her behind. He sort of, you know, he touched her behind, she alleged. And so she sued him. And, and that's what this is. From that day on, Keanu Reeves never takes pictures with fans unless there's a distance between them and his hands are in front of him. Why? Because people take advantage of that. Of course, I'm not suggesting. I'm not suggesting that this young model that took a picture with Miles Sampa was trying to do anything. She wasn't. I mean, she was. she's just a young girl that, that, that wanted to take an opportunity to take a picture with a former mayor and a current member of parliament for, for Matero constituency. Honorable Miles Sampa. That's all she wanted to do. There was nothing sinister about that. There was nothing, you know, strange about that. The only problem is the way that the photograph was taken and, and the moment you post that picture, it's that old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Where, where, do you, where do you think that phrase comes from? Who do you think came up with that phrase? And why do you think they said what they said? It's because a photograph can be interpreted in a thousand different ways. A picture is worth a thousand words. So here it is, Honorable Mao Well, he's standing there with this young broad. <laughs> and, and social media just went nuts. <laughs> and here's Miles. Poor Miles. He 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 has no idea what's going on. I mean, he's he's out there. He's just doing his thing, you know. But I tell you what, it's done now. And, and I I remember what's her name? One of the social media personalities. She talked about this. What it's done now is that it has put us in a position. When I say us, I'm talking about anybody that's a social media personality that that is approached and asked to take a picture with, what that issue has taught us now is that we have to be cautious. Because, you know, sometimes you don't even think about these things, especially when you're a man and a female fan wants to take a photograph with you. I mean, some of these women, boy, I'll tell you what, 
I mean, they crouch up right under you, you know. They hold you. You know, they cling to you. Well, I'll tell you, there's one young lady uh, down here at Simon. Of course, I'm not suggesting I'm anybody important. I'm just giving you an example. I'm walking down SML, Simon, where some young girl, bless her, she didn't mean anything by it, you know. She she was very kind, and she was excited. Mr. Moore, may I take a picture with you? And I said, sure, let's do it. And boy, I tell you, she crouched in. She she snuggled in close, you know. <laughs> the whole time I'm taking the photograph, and I've had a few of these. The whole time I'm taking the picture, I'm thinking, oh, my wife sees this. I'm finished. I'm done. I'm through. <laughs> so this young girl, boy, she she snuggles up close, you know. And and um, so so the point is, especially us men, we have to be careful when we take photographs with 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 women we have to be careful okay thought i'd share that with you uh lastly here it is you've got the impending sale of the gulf stream how in the world you guys know this i was reading this in the in the daily mail today the former permanent secretary of the ministry of defense okay he's He's going to go through it because those chaps in the PF, when you look at the amount of money that these guys were throwing around and the way they would flout procedure, how in the world do you spend? Here it is. You've got a Gulf Stream, market value, $40, 50000000 million. These PF crooks wake up and say, no, just, just peg it at $70 million. Ye 20 million, yeah, Pamulu. I mean, talk about skimming off the top. Ye 20 million dollars, ye twalakana. That's what it is. I mean, that's what they these guys used to do. And I warn, let me tell you, government. You have to be careful. Follow procedure. Do the right thing. How would how are you going to sell an aircraft? <laughs> for seventy million dollars, when it's worth twenty million, uh, sorry, when it, when it's worth fifty million, and then you share the twenty million dollars, not to quacha dollars buana, at the expense of the nation. Look, I know some of you are going to sit there and say, "Well, well, you've never been in government, so you don't know the temptation and the greed that goes on in government." The temptation is there; you just have to fight against it. You have to rage against the dying of the light. It's real. You should say something. So those boys are in big trouble. They are. And, and guys, may I make a, an admonition to the Ministry of Justice and the police, the ACC, the DEC? Could we start seeing some arrests and some convictions? We are, we are going into year two, 2023. Guys, let me tell you, if we get to the end of 2023, and we start bleeding into 2024, and we have no concrete convictions. Huh. Buana, you think those chaps are going to sit quiet? Bakula Imba from six to 48 hours. Six, back the following day. Hey, what it will be safe. If what the party have to Whoa. So, do the right thing. Cross every T, dot every I. Follow procedure. Make sure that when you get these guys, you get them in the right way with the right tactics. And you know what I'm talking about. Don't let them off the hook. That's the truth right there. I'll tell you now. Okay. Lastly, let me... I didn't put it up here, but I'll just go ahead and say it. Did I put it up there? I think I should. Let me just put it up here. There is, here, let me type it on here so that Chinese sex, what did I call it? Sex syndicate. Is that how you spell syndicate in Lusaka? 
Boom. Right. There it is. The Chinese sex syndicate. In- do you know what's going on? Guys, do you have any idea what the world has become around you? Many of us, you know, we wake up in the morning, we take a shower, we hang out with our families, our wives, kids. We may have breakfast at the house every so often. We drive to work. We do our thing. But there is an underground criminal syndicate that is happening right under our noses. Do you know what these Chinese guys are doing now? Because you know Chinese, the Chinese have come into Zambia with a lot of money. They see the loophole. The loophole is poverty. And, And there is nothing worse than having a situation where you've got lots of money, you've got lots of young, pretty, vulnerable girls, and then you've got poverty. Boom. That's a powder cake. You know what the Chinese are doing now? There's a syndicate. There's a Chinese syndicate right now. They are recruiting young Zambian men to go into these nightclubs. And they are recruiting young, vulnerable, black Zambian girls. And they are incorporating them into a lifestyle of prostitution. Sometimes they go deep into the kombon, not even nightclubs. They'll just walk through the compound. Walking through Kalingalinga, they just see a young girl, 15, 16 years old, just walking down a dirt gravel road. They approach her. They say, hey, look, I've got 5,000 kwacha here. Somebody wants to be with you. This is a young 15-year-old girl. She, the child probably doesn't even have a prop, a, 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 pos, a, a, a proper a, a home family set up. What is she going to do? Of course, she'll be susceptible. She'll be vulnerable. And they are recruiting young Zambian girls at lightning speed. A few years ago, I mentioned to you that one of the most dangerous things I see going on in Zambia is, you know, sometimes in the morning, especially during the school term, you'll, you'll find, you'll see a, a, a group of young schoolgirls standing on the side of the road, waving cars down so that they can be given a ride to school or somewhere near their school. Have you seen this? Well, you've got a syndicate now that is targeting those young girls. Parents, don't allow your children to flag down strangers. My goodness. Guys, we're not living in Wonderland. You're not Alice. You are not Alice, and this is not Wonderland. This is a jungle. We are living in dangerous times. There are wolves everywhere seeking to devour you and vanquish you until there is nothing left. Don't walk around thinking that this is patty cake, patty cake, baker man. Don't walk around thinking that the world is holding hands, singing kumbaya as they go to church. No, we're living in a a dangerous world. The word of God says the heart of man is desperately wicked. So don't allow your girl children. Go to school. I don't have transport money to give you or money for transportation. Okay, which really that's the way it's supposed to. You can't say transport money. You say money for transportation. We'll talk about that later. But don't. Say to your children, I don't have anything to give you for your transport, so go out there and start hitchhiking. My goodness. That's so dangerous. That is so, you have no idea how much in harm's way you're placing your children. No idea. And you you go about your daily lives thinking that everything is okay. It's not okay. Stop that. 
Stop it. And the police need to get to the bottom of this. This syndicate is real. It's re and it's happening. It's happening, man. Th this is beyond just prostitution. I'm not talking about the young girls, young 25, 28, 30 year old women, these young broads that stand on the side of the street corner soliciting and prostituting. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about young, vulnerable, underage girls. 13, 14, 15 years old that are being incorporated and recruited into this Chinese sex syndicate. It's happening. It's real. You should, you should say something. It's real. I thought I'd share that with you. All right. I've been speaking for 30 minutes. I got work to do. God bless, guys. Take care of yourselves and each other.